Hello everyone, welcome to Bangers, Bombs, and Banter, episode 33. Yes, 33. Yep. Uh, I got it. Um, you did it. I'm one of your hosts, Joe. I'm here with my co-host, Brendan. I'm the co-host, Brendan. And we're here That's with impressive. a guest. We have a guest. Hey, I'm Mike, and I'm eating a big fucking bag of M&Ms right now. Whoa. Holy mm. fuck. Something's stopping. These are, these are some good M&Ms, man. Damn. Are they just regular M&Ms? Yeah. Just like regular milk chocolate M&Ms. That's a lot of M&Ms, oh my god. <laughs> right? So, for some godforsaken reason, my mom's like, Hey, man. I'm going back for your last semester. I'm getting you some groceries so you don't have to go pandemic shopping, which I'm going to have to anyway. Uh, and among my groceries was just this giant fuck-off bag of M&Ms. <laughs> and and nice. you're eating it. Yeah. All right. Good. Good to know. Anyways, <laughs> we have a show yeah. to do. <laughs> yeah. Um. I'm sorry. I'm eating ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> it's mint chip. It's pretty good. Um. It, it does. It, what brand is it, Bryce? So this it's week really on ba Bangers, Bops, Bops, and Banter, we have a double double feature, motherfuckers. Yeah. The double double feature. Um. First up, we got the Battle of the Boy Bands. We got In Sync versus Backstreet Boys. They're they're going at it. They're fighting it out, not literally, but figuratively in our minds. One can hope. Um, one can dream. Um, and then afterwards, we're gonna talk about both the original Shark Boy and Lava Girl. And also, the sequel, We Can Be Heroes, that just came out on Netflix. Um, so, it's sequel. It, oh, and quotes. we also have music and movie news before the, all that, but yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We just said I want to say to the, uh, to, to the three and a half people tuning in, Joe and Brendan were originally not going to have a guest, and then I found out that they were doing Shark Boy and Lava Girl, and I wanted the fuck in on this. Um, and we're glad to have you here. Don't lie yeah. to me. Don't patronize me. We are. All right. Anyway, um, stop eating ice cream, damn it! I it's good <laughs> ice cream. I have like, I don't have much left, but I, there are like little hairs in it. And I was like, well, ooh, that's ooh. Let me get those out of it. Anyway, um, <laughs> we got some music and movie news. Let's talk about some music and movie news. I'll no. <laughs> well, this is um an interesting start. Oh wow. <laughs> Yummy. Alright. First in music news, uh this headline is too good for me to not talk about and share. Wazeblood has a new song in Roblox Titanic video game. <laughs> I'm sorry? <laughs> it's about time. <laughs> Titanic Risen, an outtake from the Titanic Rising session, appears in the sinking ship simulation in Roblox. <laughs> you don't Boy, say! Don't... <laughs> um, <laughs> That's really funny. Yeah. Man, dude, this, is, this might be even bigger than Marshmallow's Fortnite concert. I mean, this is way what a career. This is even Fortnite bigger concert. than Lil Nas X's Roblox concert. Little Nas did a Roblox, uh, did a Roblox concert. Mm-hmm. He did like oh, a bunch, cool. which is great. It's hilarious. Yeah, that seems in character, honestly. Um, speaking of Little Nas X, uh oh, Old Town Road is now the most certified song in uh Rhea history. Wow. Uh, what? Yeah, it's gone fourteen X platinum. That's. Being very impressive. Yeah. What? Yeah. It's like it, I mean, it was literally the most popular song of all time. Essentially, it was yeah. on the Billboard charts at number one for like seventeen weeks or something, or eighteen weeks. It broke the previous like record. Like okay, two. I'm not gonna lie to you, fellas. I have never heard Old Town Road, and at this time point, I'm. It's just a personality trait, so like you I'm gonna keep it that way. Damn, you should. It's like really fun. I really like Old Town Road. 
It's a great song. Um, it's enjoyable. All right, bitch. What? <laughs> no, you just. <laughs> It was a very, like, I don't know about that. <laughs> I mean, it, it is a fun song. It's enjoyable. How dare you not I mean, like this song I've never heard as I much like as Joe. I love it. But... Damn. Um, all right. Uh, uh, next in the music news, Da Baby has been arrested for gun possession. The rapper was arrested Aww. in Beverly Hills after a loaded weapon in... Uh, the the baby car. <laughs> oh. Hey, no one understands this. The hey, baby Joe? car. <laughs> Joe, can you link the Tom Scott baby with a gun in the description? Because no. I feel it's relevant. Oh. No, it's the baby car. I'm sorry. <laughs> is there, this is, is like, there like a, a good image of the baby car that we yeah can, uh... here, Mike. Uh... Where's the baby? The baby is a rapper from uh, fuck. He he's a rapper. Uh, he put he's been popping he's off been I guess, in the past year, and there's this one meme called the baby car, and it's like the greatest thing ever. <laughs> so here's the baby car, Mike. Oh boy, what do we got? Make this the thumbnail, please. <laughs> <laughs> This is the baby car. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll do it. So, I'll make it happen. Thank you. Um, it's so. Oh man, I'm sorry. I just saw that the loaded, like on on the fucking article, it just says the loaded weapon was found in his car, and I could not help myself. <laughs> um. Anyway. Uh. Next in music news, Dr. Dre has been hospitalized following a brain aneurysm. Yeah. Uh, he's, he's doing still okay, in the ICU. Though. Yeah. He's, sp sp um, he's supposed to be doing okay, though. So that's good. That's, that is good. Yeah. It's unfortunate. Mm. You know, brain aneurysms. They're my Not third there, least favorite kind of aneurysm. Yeah. Oh, wow. What a nice fun fact. Thank I'll you. write that down. I'm a um, fun guy. Sure. Excuse me. The, ooh, the ice cream. You coming back. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, lastly, in music news, the Grammys have been postponed to March. Um, originally scheduled for January 31st, they now moved to March 14th. You know that cool. Weezer yeah. song, Say It Ain't So? That that ain't it. Yeah, that. <laughs> I don't know. I don't feel like... Uh, does it, I feel like no, no one gives I don't think a shit cares. about yeah. the Grammys. Um, <laughs> but inevitably, we'll make a video on who won the Grammys and why they were wrong for choosing the person who won. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah. Anyway. Next on... Uh, next up, we got movie news. Um, all right. <laughs> um, so, uh, A24 has announced a new film directed by Darren Aronofsky. Uh, it stars Brendan Fraser. It's called The Whale. And Brendan Fraser is going to be playing a 600 pound man. And I am so excited. Because it's Brendan Fraser. He's back. Wait. Uh, okay. Interesting. So, like, is he going to be gaining it's... weight for this role? or? I don't think so. He's not. He's not really Christian Bale. <laughs> <laughs> I fear. Um. But, uh, yeah. A cool movie. Interesting. Um, and then the, the the only other piece of movie news, which I thought was pr pretty entertaining, is that David Hasselhoff is auctioning off a replica of himself from the SpongeBob movie. Yeah! <laughs> really oh funny. my god, I forgot that he kept that. It is pretty great. I think the story goes that, like, they were gonna fucking throw out the prop, and then David Hasselhoff is like, 
I need this in my life. <laughs> uh, he deserves. I need it. a life-size bust of me just after my prime. God damn it! Damn. Oh, what a what, what a, a great cameo! Like yeah. my god. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Well, that's it for the thing. Next is the other, the uh, second thing. <laughs> wow, the dude. boy bands. So we got two Bad. boy bands here. Two in sync and Backstreet Boys, the classics. The if you were up in the nineties, in the two thousands, you knew Backstreet Boys. You knew in sync, and you always wondered which one's better. And there's really a correct answer. Oh my god! It which is big time. Bands is so much worse. It's big Hold time. On, which one rush. was on Arthur though? Because like whichever one was on Arthur clearly won. I don't know. I think it was they the Backstreet like... Boys were on Arthur. Oh no. Yeah. Backstreet. Damn. Kind of. They kind of sell out. I'm gonna be real with you. They also kind of fucking suck. <laughs> yeah. I don't, I, uh, I'm going to be honest. I'm kind of enjoy these records equally. I think they're both fine. Oh, okay. Um, so that is what we call in the industry a bad opinion. And let me yeah. tell you why, <laughs> folks. Um, okay. The thing with Backstreet Boys self-titled. Um, so aesthetically, I, I don't know what to call it. You know that, like, terrible 90s white guy soul sound? I don't know I mean, if pop? that's what I'd call it. It's, yeah, it's pop. <laughs> yeah. Right, but, like, you know what I mean. Um, <laughs> so, quite obviously, actually, boys lean very heavily into that. Um, here's the problem, right? All the songs, I think all but two are basically the same love song. Uh, Non-specific love song with, like, shitty synth drum backing beats um really boring rhythms even though they are a five piece vocals only group the most they ever do is like one song has a three part harmony and that's it they're mostly just singing unison there's nothing going on harmonically there's nothing going on rhythmically there's nothing going on lyrically i wanted to fucking well, i didn't want to shoot myself cuz like it wasn't like I wasn't like painful to listen to, but it was offensively mediocre. Mm. That's interesting because while I agree with that, it is very mediocre. Um, <laughs> I, and although I think the production on the InSync album is much more lively and interesting, I think lyrically, InSync has some very cringy stuff. <laughs> um. Uh, like so the they're song... both terrible when they rap. Yeah, no, but you have, like, the song It's Gonna Be Me, and it's like, I, uh, e. this is well, kind We're of... talking about Ooh. the, um, like, the version on Spotify that is Backstreet Boys self-titled on Spotify, because that's yeah. not, like, mm -hmm. actually, I just want to clarify that this is not a real Backstreet Boys album. Uh, this Wait, is a, what? like a mix this is a mix between their first and second albums. I want to let you all know. Oh, that is, oh, really that is interesting. annoying. That kind of makes sense because they kind of switch between awkward. I, the worst part of the Backstreet Boys album is there's a lot of like ballads that are like super slow and insanely boring. Mm -hmm. I enjoy the album, the album is mostly ballads. Yes, but there's like more energetic and like. Yeah, like Backstreet Sounding Back songs is a is a more energetic sound. That's yeah, you also have album. like Hey Mr. GJ, which I actually like the kind of like weirdness of the beat that's going yeah. on. I also it's like that like song a... also from their second album. <laughs> okay, Interesting. maybe you should have just done the second album. <laughs> uh, yeah, Backstreet's Back. Okay, the thing is like I don't know why they don't have just the first album or just the second album on Spotify. It's fucking weird. Is that the second album services. not? The second album too. So yeah, they don't have the sec the they don't have the first album or the second album on streaming services. They seem to just have this mash of the two. 
and I don't know why. Interesting. I blame the economy. Um, but like, okay, here's the thing about Backstreet Boys lyrically compared to NSYNC, because like, I agree that they are both pretty fucking goofy. Um, it's, Backstreet. Yeah, it, it's not so like goofy. It's like it's gonna be me. Is like really creepy and like genuinely concerning. <laughs> <clears throat> I mean, I would, I would also, um, oh god, I don't remember the name of the song, the, the Backstreet Boys song that's like, if you want to be a good girl, you have to date a bad boy, or whatever the fuck, is like, equally like, oh, uh, like, yeah, in, with It's Gonna Be Me, it feels like he's like, I'm gonna force you into a relationship, girl. Like, that's yeah. what comes off from that song to me. Okay. So, my my thing with it, right? My take. Um, with the NSYNC album, we, um... They go for this, like... <laughs> they have this, like, almost cartoonishly hedonistic aesthetic going on, lyrically, right? Mm. Like... The fucking... Oh, I'm gonna bring up the track list, because I do not remember the names of them. Um, let's check my fucking uh, Spotify history. That I'm gonna get so many boy bands on my Discover Weekly now. I'm mad at you guys. Hell yeah, listen to Big Time Rush. Big Time Rush is the greatest band of all time. We'll do a Big Time Rush classic review someday. We will, okay, actually. So Hundred percent. I'm holding Brendan to um, it. <laughs> so like just got paid track four on uh, No Strings Attached. Um It's like literally like <laughs> song is just fuck yeah, it's Friday, I got my money, I'm gonna spend it on big booty bitches, and it's like, you know what? <laughs> you do you and sync uh, it's like ah uh, it's weird i don't know because like like although it's... there are songs on the instinct album that i really like it like a lot of them come off like really tacky it's, it's incredible they are, they are album, incredibly definitely. tacky like but it's like to the point tacky. where it's like too much to take it's like couldn't you have toned this down a little bit because there's songs on here that are amazing like bye 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 incredible bye track. bye bye is better I, than any backstreet boy song ever i'm just gonna say i that. will agree yeah. it's so good um but again just got paid is like obnoxious and it's i, like I genuinely like really i genuinely enjoyed it because okay here's the thing Aesthetically, cause just comparing the two, Backstreet Boys doesn't really have personality. Like, most of the tracks are just like, hey girl, you're a, you're a cute girl, girl. I, uh-oh, my sister's here to tell me to stop being loud recording the podcast, and I'm telling her that Maggie kicked me out of the basement, so I kind of have to be here, get fucked. Anyway... <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> like how I handled that. <laughs> uh, anyway, so, and then you have like a couple tracks like "Backstreets Back," where instead of "Hey girl, I'm a really non-threatening nice guy," and you're pretty cute in a nondescript way and i would literally fucking shoot myself for you girl um the other songs are like yeah let's party and have a good time in a safe non-threatening way because we're cool and <laughs> your parents will approve of us it's like Wink. really accurate yeah whereas nsync is like <laughs> let's get fucking crunk dude Let's fucking go! <laughs> oh. And, like, I respect that so much more. Mm. As shitty and tacky as it is. Because you're right about that. But, like, <laughs> the lyrics actually have 
some semblance of personality, albeit a very fuckboy personality. <laughs> um, also, we were talking on video chat, and Brendan's just fucking vibing right now, and it's incredible to bye, watch. Bye, bye, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> bye, 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 so um, good. It is great. And then, combined with that, um, there are some genuinely really interesting um, rhythmic moments in um, uh, I literally forgot the name of the end scene album that we're talking about. No strings no attached. Strings attached. Uh, and like really complex, like five part harmony at some points. Like, and and okay. Part of the problem with Backstreet Boys self titled, which isn't a real album. Hi, how are you? A lot of these Backstreet Boys songs really really overstay their welcome um it's like verse chorus verse chorus 20 more times until the end and like that's fine normally but they never build on the ideas they just kind of do the same thing for the whole four minute run with like the back different backstreet boys like doing some vocal riffs at some points but like it's the same vocal riffs every time. Whereas some of the NSYNC songs, again, overstay their welcome just a little bit. They never do it quite as much because, like you said, Joe, the production's a little bit better. Mm. Um, it's, it's a lot better. Um, so, like, you get, even as the chorus keeps repeating, the song builds on itself and changes itself in ways that are, like, very interesting to your ears... Your ears, Joseph. I get. I whoa. I can see Joseph. Them. Your ears. I can see them. Oh, well, actually, you can't see mine because they're gone. I sh cut them off my head. Um, that's kinky. Yeah. By the way, do you Any like my girls who like earless guys? Surface, hit me up. <laughs> do you like my serpent's earbuds for one ninety nine at the Microsoft Store? Characters welcome. Why? Okay. Okay. All right. Anyway, Does friends, what do you think? Now? What, are, what are your opinions? You can't just say that the video is sponsored and the video becomes sponsored. Microsoft would never sponsor anybody, Yo, much less us. Can we get sponsored by Arizona? Because like Arizona, I, I love their not the state, the iced tea company. <laughs> yeah, iced tea. I'd, I'd be down honestly. I I would I, I, well, I fuck with cool. Arizona iced tea. Anyways, like as lube. No, no. I um, I just realized. That I was like, "Oh, come on, Mike!" And then I realized the pun. I was like, "Ooh, the little play on words." Anyways, uh, my opinions on these albums. So I, I'm not a huge like boy band guy in general. Uh, I definitely like the tracks that are more upbeat and like danceable off both these albums. Um, yep. Than the like, kind of slow love ballads. What ends up happening is that Backstreet Boys have more slow love ballads than NSYNC. And yeah. I, I enjoy NSYNC far more because of that. Backstreet Boys, I actually went through the entire Backstreet Boys and NSYNC discography in the past week. Jesus I'm sorry fuck. to hear that. Why? Uh, hold on, hold well, on. Was, you know, I want, I, want, I want to see. NSYNC is only three albums. Backstreet Boys is like eight or something like that. Wait, so uh, you're telling me that you had time to do that? But you didn't have the time <laughs> to rewatch Shark, Shark Boy and Lava Girl. <laughs> I didn't think I would have to. I didn't think we would get that into Shark Boy and Lava Girl. Oh, we are We're getting gonna into get Shark really Boy and into... Lava Girl. Ooh. Okay, I'll, I'm there... sure you'll you'll spike my memory. Um, but like Backstreet yeah, Boys, like the, I'm gonna the... spike your tea. <laughs> <laughs> I don't... Hello, I don't crime like, police. Really, really like what? All right. Anyway. Uh, Anyways, the Backstreet Boys album, uh, like it's got some, it's got some fun jams. Like every, everybody Backstreet's back and Hey Mr. DJ keep playing this song. Like, get down as well. Those are like some fun dancey jams. But there's so many Aww. here. Like I'll never break your heart. All I have to give. There's just like so many songs on this album. They're just like slow love ballads. I'm just, I just don't, I can't stand them. The like, overall, this album's pretty like fine it's a fine listen but there's so much 
that just drags on, as Mike said. Um, I'm just going to say it, dude. Backstreet Boys sounds like porn music. Mm, okay. That's not a, necessarily a bad do, I guess. I'm just saying that Marvin Gaye record, Let's Get It On, is like a masterpiece and like <laughs> incredible. And it kind of sounds like porn music, which is not really the fault of the record, but more the fault of uh, how porn. that songs on that record have been used. Um, yeah. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> um, but for NSYNC, NSYNC, definitely a lot more interesting production, a lot more interesting uh, vocal, like, choruses and stuff. They were, like, way catchier. Like, Bye 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 is, is literally so good. I also really love a lot of the more danceable tracks on this album as well, like mm-hmm. Digital Get Down, Bring In The Noise. I really, yeah. I find those tracks pretty fun. Yeah, Digital Get Down is such a goofy track, and I love it, it really so is. much. They have, oh, um, my God. They actually have a song on their next album that's pretty much Digital Get Down, but with, like, video game music. <laughs> called uh the game is oh? over I'm, i think yeah it's kind of it's a fun, oh it's another fun track like bastion boys honestly or not bastion boys instinct honestly has like a really solid production throughout which yeah definitely makes it a far better listen and again the songwriting is just better yeah I'd, I'd have to agree with that too it doesn't bore me to death i mean there are some yeah. definitely slower songs here as well like um this i promise you i'm not the biggest fan even though i know it's like a popular song but like i'm not i'm not that big on it uh i really loved i thought she knew even though like it's it's like a very you know down tempo song just because again they do some fucking crazy harmonies there like i enjoy it damn Harmonies are cool. You've heard it here first, folks. Harmonies are cool. Harmonies are cool. According to Ben Shapiro, I think you need harmony to have music, so. Yes. Yep. Um, you know. Yeah. We should we should really just rate everything on the Ben Shapiro scale of is it music? Yeah. So man. So Actually, I have some Ben Shapiro stuff to talk about with Shark Boy and Lava Girl too. Oh my oh, god! What? How do you relate to Shark Boy and Lava Girl to Ben Shapiro? Um, it's easier than you think. I'm is sure Ben it is. Shapiro a uh, Shark Boy? No, so, dude. Linus has big Ben Shapiro energy, and you cannot oh, tell me he does. Oh, um, yo, can I just say I love that Linus has an L on his shirt, and I saw that, and I'm like, oh my god, he's Waluigi. <laughs> <laughs> it literally is like a waluigi shirt okay i think i think we need to rate these albums so we can talk about the masterpiece that is okay. shark boy and lava girl all, all right, right all right all right let's go i'm um, here for it the backstreet boys album that's really just mash up their first two albums not like a five it's it's fine it's got some good it's got plenty of not that good uh in sync no strings attached much more positive on much fun to be had listening to that record um, oh, bye 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 stuck. fantastic song uh i'm at like a seven like a light seven wow. right. yeah so i agree um no strings attached light seven uh, uh backstreet boys fucking two out of ten never make me listen to this again <laughs> i oh, hated it boys. so much get fucked oh man oh uh, uh all right, for me, Backstreet Boys is like a five. It's fine. There's some fun songs on there, but it's boring. In Sync is a much more interesting album, but is also so tacky. It's to the point where it gets annoying on a lot of tracks. Like I know you mentioned, like Digital Get Down, and I like really don't like that track because of the vocal Ooh. effects. They're so terrible. Um, but it's how can like you digitally get things. down without digital some, vocal effects, Joe? There's some bad, like "Bye Bye Bye," amazing. Also, I like the rapping on "Space Cowboy" from uh, Lisa uh, Lisa Left Eye Lopez. Yeah, she, she does a really good job. I agree. Good job. Um, I was I saw that feature. And I'm like, oh god, we're gonna have a rap on a boy band album, and then I was pleasantly surprised. Um, but no strings attached. I'd give like a five to a six. Mm-hmm. It's like, it's, so we it's all agree just, that InSync is InSync, InSync won this battle. Better. 
They yes. won the battle of the boy right. bands. Hell yeah. Well, uh, let me tell you, if you really want to fucking hate Backstreet Boys, listen to some of their later records. Uh, Never Gone. Never want to hear it again. <laughs> I am not listening to any more Backstreet Boys. You cannot pay me to listen to more Backstreet Boys. I yes, swear to God. You yeah, probably can. can. You I have am a really strapped for cash. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Like I do have a price and it is low. <laughs> I have a quarter. Uh, it's not that low, Jesus. Oh, damn. Right. Well, uh, let's 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 talk about Shark Boy and Lava Girl. Let's I, talk I, about I, Shark Boy and Lava Girl. I kind of love this movie. It's, it hasn't aged too great. There's like problems that really get in the way of the film, but like at its core, this is an amazing kids film. Like it's such, it's so good. I don't like if I was a kid, I and I watched this, I would have like fucking loved it. Okay, so wait, actually, wait, that begs the question: Did any of us watch this as kids? Because I, I did not. I watched and Lava Girl as a kid, yeah. okay. and like when I was little, I loved it way more than like I reasonably should have. And it's a little embarrassing in hindsight. And I was going into this week, like, man. This movie fucking sucks. I can't wait to dunk on it. And then I watch it and I'm like, how do I put this? Like, especially during the climax of the movie, I kept saying to myself, oh my god, this is so bad. This is so bad. But like, with the, just the biggest fucking grin on my face. It's like, yeah, yeah it's so, it's so charming. Fun. It knows what it is. It knows that it's mm -hmm. like this like silly kids film. And it's just like, it completely plays into it. Right, it's and so it's so earnest. Yeah. You know? Yes. Um, um, and and there's actually a really interesting reason for that. Um, because yeah. more so than any other film in his dis uh, filmography, discography, Jesus, we're still in Backstreet Boys mode, apparently. Um, I'm usually a big believer in separating art from artist, but you cannot do that with Shark Boy and Lava Girl and Robert Rodriguez. Because, so like his closest friend in the film industry, um, Quentin Tarantino, um, they both grew up on extremely pulpy, like, B-movie stuff, right? Yeah. And while Tarantino, like, takes all these B-movie ideas and aesthetics and, like, tweaks them to be, um, like really exciting and borderline like classy um mm. robert rodriguez um just embraces the shitty b-movie aesthetic wholeheartedly um and usually it works to his benefit machete and machete kills would not be nearly as fun if they were quote-unquote better made movies and mm -hmm. Robert Rodriguez is also clearly capable of doing, like, some really, really high-quality work. Most recently, he directed the excellent episode 14 of The Mandalorian, the fucking Boba Fett episode, right? Mm. Um, he just chooses not to. Yeah. Uh, and Shark Boy and Lava Girl is absolutely that. And what makes it especially fascinating... So, he wrote the screenplay, but he didn't write the story... The story was written by, like, his really, really young son. <laughs> yeah. Who came up with the characters of Sharkboy and Lava Girl. You that, know? That's what I think works so well. Like, everything in... If, firstly, it feels insanely original. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't, I don't think I can name a film that even comes close to, like, having such a wild concept as this one does. Yeah, but also it like th that like aspect of it. I guess, I guess um, I, the creativity is presented in such. It's presented like completely through through the eyes of like a child, essentially. Mm -hmm. Um, and that just makes it so like wholesome. <laughs> um, yeah, like man, um, even like. Even like aspects that I feel like haven't aged well this about this film specifically, the effects are very like 
this is a 2000s film and everything is well, CG. But like, so here's the here's the thing about the effects in Shark Boy and Lava Girl, they were bad at the time. Mm. Um, and this is again one of the reasons why you can't talk about Shark Boy and Lava Girl without talking about Robert Rodriguez. Um, there's this like really strange moment in um the movie where they're they're blasting off to planet drool and and yeah. lava girls inexplicably like okay everyone put on your glasses and it's like what um <laughs> on your glasses the official title of the movie yeah it's is shark boy, the adventures of shark boy and lava girl in 3d yes and uh, that is, is the moment in the movie yeah that is the moment in the movie where you are actually supposed to put oh. on three glasses given to you by the theater or like that came with the dvd box um oh, okay that makes sense i yeah. love i just wanted to say i that scene is like so funny where like she's just like pink glasses for girls and blue glasses for boys and henry's like do you have any other boy glasses and she's like no and it's just like except like it's just like like accepted it's just like okay yeah and like it's literally because the theaters had like two kinds of glasses to give out mm. yeah because <laughs> this was back i always it's kind of interesting that you said that shark boy and lava girl were based off of his his kids designs because i always thought because back then it was the blue and red 3d that like shark boy was the because there was movies very much based in like 3d it has 3D in, as part of its core. So Shark Boy was the blue 3D and Lava Girl's the red 3D kind of aspect. Um, I think we've lost Mike due to some technical issues, but he will be back with us shortly. Um, moving on, though, I, I really like... like The 3D doesn't translate today, obviously, because we're not watching in 3D. I don't have a pair of 3D glasses lying around. Um, but I do think... I, you know, for the the effects for the time, they're trying to show off like 3D stuff, and Ooh. it Yo, some maybe rap songs. some rap maybe sorry. <laughs> <laughs> All right, for context, Mike's face is like super blurry right now because image is frozen. <laughs> so. <laughs> we'll be right back. Um. <laughs> <laughs> anyways i really love that one uh the thing that i think i love about shark boy and lava girl the most is just how like child it has it has this beautiful sense of childlike wonder to the film because it's all being sensed you know all being seen through the eyes of a child you're literally w walking through a child's dreams the entire movie and his his imagination um and it's i think it really captures that really well uh and it, it's just it's a really fun uh, like adventure film because of that sorry i i, I cut out for a second discord crash but i yeah, got another yeah, um it happens uh, i'm not sure if we move past this or not but the the the, the 3d thing yeah the movie bad. rodriguez's filmography immediately before this was spy kids 3d game yeah. over Mm. And that movie... Also a fantastic film. <clears throat> um, someone ring the dinkster? Did something That's what I'm saying. Dinkster? I will say Spy Kids 3 is the weakest of the Spy Kids trilogy. I'm not going to lie to you, fellas. Okay, oh, what about the quadrilogy, though? Is there another one? Yeah, there's a Spy I'm Kids not going to lie to you. I never saw Spy Kids 4. Yeah, it's like a... It, it's like a reboot sequel. It's weird. Um, But Spy Kids 3... Before the movie starts, there's like a little message that's like, when characters put their glasses on, you should do that too. And so, because only the scenes in the game world are in 3D. Yep. And so, right when we're cutting into those, you have characters put on their glasses. When we cut out of those, the characters take off their glasses. And it's the stupidest, gimmickiest thing. And I love it so much. <laughs> and like... Both of those movies have, like, so much cinematography that makes no sense except for the the 
context of you're in the theater and like it's it's jumping out at you and making you jump back in your seat so to warrant those big 3d bucks that you spent to see the movie yeah yeah by the way while we're on the topic how do y'all like like 3d movies because i'm not a fan yeah. personally i hate it i like it actually like gives me a headache when it's in movies yeah, same. I, it's really like a there's very so few it, films that i actually would enjoy, probably enjoy seeing in 3d Mm-hmm. So it's never given me a headache. I've always been like one of the six and a half people who actually played their 3DS with the 3D all the way up all the time. Ooh. Um, Ooh. Well, it helped I had a new 3DS, so like the the one that would like oh, the eye okay. tracking. Oh, that, okay. That's fair. That's the <clears throat> not bad on those. Although I still had 3D on on my original model. Anyway, okay, um, the thing is, most films aren't made with 3D in mind. Yeah, uh, and mm-hmm. so they don't gain much from it. <sighs> Yawn there, and then a lot of the movies that do take kind of the Robert Rodriguez approach of like just treating it as a gimmick and not like as like a slightly different medium. Mm-hmm. Um, so like nothing interesting is ever done with the extra depth that you get on the screen, which is a shame. Uh. And then you have Christian Bale, who will, like, shoot one sequence in IMAX 3D with, like, a really jarring aspect ratio change in the middle of the movie. Oh, Christopher Nolan, you mean? Yeah. Christian Bale. (laughs) Christian (laughs) Bale. (laughs) Well, because he played Batman in the Batman movie. He's also been to Prestige, and (gasps) uh, that's it, I think. Yeah. Those are the only Christian Bale movies that have ever been. Probably oh, not. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah. No, I mean, like, no, I don't know. No, Nolan is very, dude. I watched Dunkirk a little while ago, and the fucking aspect ratio kept changing in the film, and not just like between scenes. In the middle of scenes, it would change aspect ratio, and it pissed me the fuck off. It was so annoying. Anyway, okay, but. But have you considered that Linus is Ben Shapiro at a Yo. young age? Okay. Um, Send him to the principal's office and have him expelled. Send line... him to the principal's office and have this man expelled! That line is oh. so good. Like, he delivers it, well, it perfectly. Yeah, like... <laughs> This, this kid is not a good actor, but it does not matter because he is just chewing the scenery. Yeah. <laughs> all the time. And I love it. Oh, man. Oh, my God. He's perfect. Yeah. Um, he's like a little baby megalomaniacal maniac, and I love him. And, like, like, like when they're chasing him on the playground and he just, like, snaps his fingers and points and, like, his fingers <laughs> just go... Oh my god, he's so extra. Um, um, man. And then, I can't believe I'm saying this, but genuinely, the most complex character in the movie, and the character that, like, gets the most theming surrounding them, that, like, or, like, the only theming surrounding them that isn't, like, in-your-face obvious to the kiddos, is motherfucking George Lopez. Oh, yeah. Dude, I kind of love... George Lopez was, like, really great in this film. He also voices, like, four different characters. Yeah. Um, well, really, he voices two different characters. Well, well, no. He plays, like, like, the teacher. He's Mr. Electricity Dad. Oh, he's Mr. Electricity. Um, he is... He's Mr. Tobor. Electricity Dad. He's Mr. Electric. He's the voices of Tobor and the Ice Guardian. Yeah. Yeah, although the Ice Guardian is, like, one line cameo yeah. but um what's interesting so the first like scene with him as like mr electricity dad um <clears throat> max's teacher he's like legitimately just like a very nice teacher who's just watching out for max and yeah. then the next day he's like this inexplicable dick to him yeah. um and and you realize that oh he was only a dick to him because, like, that wasn't 
that morning wasn't real. That morning was part of Max's dream. Yeah. Um, and like when we snap back to reality, oops, there goes gravity. Um, he goes back to being his wholesome self. Yeah. And in Max's dream, the two like important characters played by George Lopez, you have the more obvious one, the evil, you know, Mr. Electric. But he also voices the wise and caring Tobor. Yeah. Right? Um, and that I think is more like representative of um the the teacher's character as a whole. And it, it's why I think that it was a very deliberate choice to have them both be um portrayed by George Lopez. Yeah. Um also I love when he, he... Mr. Electricity Dad, Electricity, fuck, Electricity Dad. Um, mm -hmm. when he sees Mix, Mr. Electric, and he's just like, "Wait, that's me? Well, I'm not a bad guy." <laughs> <laughs> I love it, what, Max. Um, yeah, it's definitely interesting. I think also him and, being the Ice Guardian like, also works really well because since yeah, he's because he the dead. He, yeah, he yeah, dead. he's protecting his daughter from the you know the kindergartner love triangle thing. Uh, it's, they're, they're, they're in fourth, fourth graders. Grade. Excuse oh, you, fourth they're fourth graders. Except when they you know, it really film. shows that you didn't brush up on Shark Boy and Lava Girl um, prior I, to this. Yeah. The, the actors in this film are all in like they're like twelve, so yeah. They're not really fourth graders, but whatever. They f they feel young though. Well, they do. Like all kids in Robert Rodriguez movies feel very very young. Mm. Um, and like okay, speaking of young, there are some problematic things like when when Lava Girl first shows up in the classroom and she's doing like the Black Widow walk down the fucking desks and like Linus is like whoa and, 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 and like by walking by the paper you know she burns it up and Linus notices and he, he's like whoa she's hot and it's like <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's like I don't know it kind of plays into the camp and yeah it, it does, really does. Like, it, it does and, it's like, not, it's, it I remember like, like the when I was a kiddo, you know, watching this movie, I'm like, yeah, that makes sense. Um, but like, <laughs> as a, as the grown ass man, I allegedly am now. Um, that comes off as very old, as does like the scene where, um, the girl gives Max like the ice crystal and like, it, it's this weird, like wedding ceremony thing. And it's like, they're fourth I, graders. I think the ice crystal thing is kind of weird, and it's definitely like implied to be like they're they're at least interested or in each other like romantically, and that's well, like kind of yeah, yeah. weird. Um, well, I mean, no, you could see they had like cute kid crushes on each other, which is fine. Guess. And like, it's also a little excusable because like in the context of the film, that is Max's dream. And you could say that Lava Girl in that scene is also part of Max's dream, which is true, but like. Listen, it's complicated, babe, okay? It is complicated. <laughs> um, yeah. But yeah, the, the whole romance with fourth graders thing is it gets kind of weird sometimes. Like, yeah, I'd agree with I that. I agree, the whole it's hot thing that plays into the camp, but it's also there's an element of uh there as well. <laughs> yeah. Um, but like, you know, fun fact. Yeah, they hired uh, eleven visual effects companies to make this film. Eleven. Eleven. Yeah, that um, this, makes sense. This, honestly, this movie had an unusually high budget for Robert Rodriguez films, not named Alita: Battle Angel, um, of fifty mil. Yep, it made seventy-two million. Dang. So not. Yeah. A success, really, but not a flop. No. Well, actually, well, it only did well internationally. It was a flop in uh, America. It only grossed 11 here. I also want to make sense. that generally films need to make back twice their uh, budget to uh, break even, usually. Um, because advertising is takes a lot of money <laughs> for these films. 
I don't know yeah, if they and, advertise and that much for Shark Boy and Lava Girl. No, Shark Boy and Lava Girl had a crazy advertising campaign. Yeah. Like, not only with all the special 3D glasses, like, that the theaters had, but also, like, brah, they even paid to have McDonald's toys. Damn. Did they? I don't yeah. remember that. I actually very specifically remember the Shark Boy and Lava Girl Happy Meal campaign, because, like, on the back of the Happy Meal box, there was, like, a sweepstakes kit, like, your your bedroom remodeled after Shark Boy or Lava Girl. Dude, that's sick. Yo, that is kind of sick. Yeah, no, I thought it was, like, the coolest thing when I was that age. Because I was the right age for that movie when it came yeah. out. Yeah. Like, if I had gone that as a kid, I didn't even watch this movie as a kid. But if I had gone it, I would have been hyped. Yeah. Shark Boy, man. Because um, yeah, all the kids knew Shark Boy and Lava Girl, you know? Yeah. It's Shark, yeah. It's Shark Boy and Lava Girl. You weren't... If you didn't know Shark Boy and Lava Girl, you weren't cool, you know? <laughs> exactly. Like, unironically. Um, oh. oh. Did Sorry, we just, I just bring thought back some of, painful memories for Joe? No, I I just thought of I just started like I I remembered like a little thing in the film where I was like, what the fuck? Um, oh. that's, it's like a plot hole essentially, <laughs> but like one that's like There's really so like plot what? Hole. It's no. okay. I know. Um, it's one that's like really weird because it's not just like you thought too hard about the film and it's like you like are being dumb it's like hey they like drew attention to this and then like did not use it whatever basically shark boy when you see his like origin story it's like he at one point he grows gills and that's like a thing is like oh yeah grows gills and then he drown or like he he's unconscious underwater and lava girls like he can only hold his breath for so long i remember that right like what he has gills <laughs> and they like yeah. very specifically bring up that he has gills so yeah and apparently a lovely singing voice he does you know dream 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 hell yeah you know? hell yeah um yeah are we do do you want to go into this film more? Are we doing? Do we want to save both scores for like the end of talking about the sure. two films? Sure. Okay. Yeah. Um, we can move on to the sequel ish. We're gonna say it right now. It's not really a sequel. They just not also use the characters of yeah. Shark Boy and Lava Girl. They're only in there for like two minutes. They did get Taylor yeah. Dooley back, but they didn't get Taylor Lautner back. So Shark Boy's played by a different actor. It's very apparent. Mm-hmm. Anyways. He never talks. Um, he okay, a little background. Line. I'm pretty sure he says we. Proud. Um, I'm very proud of you. Fifteen goddamn yeah. years after Shark Boy and Lava Girl came out, Netflix approaches Robert Rodriguez and they're like, "Hey, your your kids' movies do bizarrely well on our platform. Can you just make another?" And he's like, "Yeah, okay, I'll do that." Uh, by the way, there's already. It's already confirmed that um, We Can Be Heroes 2 is in pre-production. Yeah. Uh, I hope it's sorry. better because... Uh, ooh. This movie was bad. This was, <laughs> like, really... Like, any... So, Shark Boy and Lava Girl is, like, so creative and, like, imaginative in its, like, concept and how it's, like, everything, like, works in that film... And this film is like so insanely boring. Well, it's, it's like impressive. a rehash of <clears throat> other films in a worse way. Well, it doesn't it's... help that uh, like like the genre shift doesn't help because no, Shark Boy and Lava Girl. Even though it from the title it sounds like a superhero movie, and that in universe Shark Boy and Lava Girl are superheroes, it is decidedly not a superhero movie. Yeah, no, right. Um, it is just like it, it's a it's an adventure it's a, film. dream adventure film yeah like it's weirdly abstract it's like exploring a kid's imagination yeah, yeah. and like his brief disillusionment with the world <laughs> um and and the whole film really does feel like it's through the eyes of a fourth grader yeah, yeah. And that's what um, makes it so great. 
Yeah. Um, Whereas We Can Be Heroes has... It, it, it's... It feels a little bit like it's riffing off the Avengers. Yes. Oh. I was... I was going to say Sky what? High as a more apt example, but... <laughs> Yo, is that Disney's fascist eugenics movie? (laughs) Anyway. I unironically adore that video. It's a great video. Jack Saint's great. Subscribe Um, to Jack Saint. They're better than Bob (laughs) Stop. Yeah. Um, That is kind of true. Thank you for me on the show, by the way. You're welcome. I agree with that. So... (laughs) Oh. Um, So, uh... Yeah, definitely. Like, it has just, like... I don't know, man. It's so formulaic. And it's, Mm -hmm. like... Oh, we learn to work together thing. Yeah. Even, like, the Um, plot twist at the end is very predictable. If you're, I think, above the age of seven. Mm. Yeah. I mean, they're predictable from the start... Uh, well, I'd argue that's not okay. I'm gonna be charitable, um, and argue that's really not the point of it at all. What's the point? Okay, what so is the point of this film, money for Netflix, but also uh, so it is money for Netflix, but like it, it, it still feels. Like a very genuine Robert Rodriguez movie, although not nearly as I... like gushingly earnest as Shark Boy and Lava Girl was. I don't disagree. I feel like well, this like his most like like it, it, I genuinely did not think this was directed by Robert Rodriguez at first. Like I was like, oh, so... they got some other director. They just got like the IP and they got some other director to direct it because it feels uh, so bland there's no like yeah. style there's none of his like style in it um I, I would i would agree with that um but like all of his children's movies it it is a very very obvious and slightly wholesome very idealistic aesop mm. um uh and it, it's not about, you know, it's good to work together. It's about kids are our future. That is the center of this film. Mm. The the working together is kind of like... N- no, no, no. It's the kids are our future, and we have to work together to make that future better. They, they intertwine the yeah. two themes, really. Yeah. And to be fair, it's... You also kind of have to have the working together thing when you're riffing off of Seven Samurai. Uh, I don't really feel like this is Seven Samurai. I also don't feel like this is riffing off Seven Samurai at all. What? I mean, it's like the loosest possible Seven Samurai riff, but you still have the... It's just working together as a team. I don't... Well, I mean, they they abridge the hell out of the getting the team together part. And mostly but, focusing on the team not getting along the, part. Yeah, yes, so that's why like, like, something like the Avengers is more accurate in that yeah. regard. Well, the Avengers is riffing on Seven Samurai. I well, kind of, but like the uh, the difference between like Seven Samurai and this film is specifically Seven Samurai. A lot of the film like takes place in one area, it is much more about like uh, planning and learning like cooperation and like. Uh, you know, getting to know these characters uh, as they, you know, do this task. Whereas in this film, it's an adventure film as they, like, go and try to stop the bad guy, essentially. It feels much different in how the narrative progresses in that way. Um, Thing, I feel like things are much more motivated by, like, guys, we gotta stop the bad guy than, like, character development. Yeah, and the adults are also, like... The adults are fucking useless in this film. Oh, my God. Well, what's what's interesting, though, is... Similar to, again, basically every 
Robert Rodriguez film, um, which or, or kids film, which I enjoy. Um, the bad guys are rarely like, or the bad guys who are like people at least are rarely actually really mean people. Mm. Um, they're usually just like you know, road to hell paved with good intentions types, and they realize the error of their ways and are nice again at the end, right? Mm, sure. Um, and this takes, like, a really extreme version of that where they were just pretending to be bad guys to help them get to learn to work together or whatever. Mm -hmm. Um, okay. <laughs> Why not? But, like, it's it's, again, this kind of unabashed optimism that like i can't help but at least respect you know mm. um it's not good no. <laughs> no no it's very oh man uh, although if you look on rotten tomatoes this one has like a 70 something shark boy and lava girl has a 19 what? That's so sad. This film was really? way worse. Yeah. I'll say, uh, I I took some notes during this film, and I'm reading back through my notes right now, and it's a fucking trip. Okay. Yeah. Um. So there's a scene where they're like meeting the team, and you meet Facemaker, right? Facemaker ability fucking useless. It's fucking garbage. Most of these kids. Okay. Here's the thing. Well, all these kids are like fucking useless. You just need the rewind guy. Rewind guy can like do everything because he just fixes time. Anyways, well, he can only <laughs> rewind for a short period of time. I yeah. I guess, but like, but well, I mean, also within the film, if the phase maker is not useless, he he, he does find one use at the end. Yes, I mean, like, the, well, I mean, hey. like, he's he's like an infiltration based superhero, you know? Yeah, yeah, like he's not a combatant. He's like, or like he's, if he is, it's like the kind of superhero that like is scary in combat just because they're a normal person who knows martial arts or whatever. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, um, no, I was gonna say sorry. So the scene where we meet Face Maker, he faces, he makes his face Noodle's face, and my note is this kid just made himself black. Can he say <laughs> the N word now? <laughs> um, <laughs> Yo, how does this work with you know? This is a question we need to explore. Like, this, in you know, this is why this film is actually a masterpiece because like, it explores those those philosophical questions. Okay, uh, uh, you know what? Um, That's it, Brendan. You forced my hand. I'm gonna gush about Robert Rodriguez, despite like the movie technically not being good again. Because another thing he does a lot that just I respect the hell out of, um. Watch, watch both of these movies. Watch any Robert Rodriguez movie. There is really, really good representation because he goes out of his way. You know, because he he grew up you know in Texas with like a very you know strong Mexican heritage. Um, he he has a crap ton of Hispanic actors um, and mm. characters in his movies. Uh, yeah. and that is genuinely a really good thing yeah you know i i agree definitely like a superhero movie where not everyone is white in fact most of them aren't okay sure good mm -hmm. yeah. fuck it nice change of pace honestly no yeah definitely Correct. um but anyways, in the scene where they're the kids are all just like watching their parents get captured by the aliens. Yeah. That scene's kind of like it's really weird because like it's kind of sad. There's some like really, if you think about it, really just like sad moments. Like these kids just that that would traumatize me as a kid so if I saw my parents like get Especially arrested or like something. Shark Boy and Lava Girls kid, dude. Yeah. <laughs> Guppy, I'm, oh, she's so young. Guppy, Anyways. is she kind of adorable in the film? Guppy, a it's bean. like it's um, I just want to Guppy like constantly like restates her powers throughout the film, which is like 
if it was from any other character, I'd get really annoyed, but she's, like, kind of adorable and, like, four in the film. <laughs> yes. So it kind of, it's, like, fine. Um, it kind of works. Well, especially Anyways. because she she always frames it in the same way. She's like, I can do this because my daddy's a shark. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. Like, okay, Anyways, Guppy. Uh, go off, My note girl. for that scene... Uh, was these kids are are watching their parents get fucking murked like okay uh so yeah they they were doing that anyways this movie made an updog joke so it's a 10 out of 10 yep yep <laughs> it, it sure did make did. an updog joke it reference oh also it referenced shark boys singing from the first yep. film <laughs> yep <laughs> at I one point that. one of the superheroes who's in captivity is like are you gonna sing another song shark boy <laughs> <laughs> so good <coughs> oh, that's, man. oh that's good and the last one is when they're all trapped and they they cry so that guppy can have water um <laughs> you're not gonna like my thought that came to my mind was can <laughs> <Guppy> <laughs> use piss? and the movie seems to imply that yes she can she can do anything with a liquid yeah, yeah, which doesn't it's make like, any sense because okay, here's here's the fucking thing. All right, Lava Girl can only use lava, right? So yeah. Guppy can just use any liquid, including lava. She's just like so much more powerful. It's because like, her dad's Guppy's a shark. Fucking yeah. overpowered, but that because her dad's a shark, she can just use any liquid, including liquid yes. metal that has no water yes. in it. Oh Brendan, my god! Yes. Anyways, I'm gonna I'm gonna rant a little bit more about how this film just like doesn't make sense sometimes. Okay, so spoiler alert, Oho is an alien. But here's what I want to ask you guys. Can she see the future or does she make the future happen? Because the film seems to imply that she makes the future happen. So she can just she draw both. anything and it will happen. So why doesn't she just draw them I working don't together? Think so. I feel no, like it so, implies that she, whatever she draws, like she does it like un subconsciously or something. Yeah, like she just kind of draws absentmindedly and like. Well, it, see, it's not. But then when she draws the monsters, there's a, there's a specific line that like the the takeover clock or whatever was counting down to when the kids would take over for their parents, right? Yeah, yeah. and she foresaw it. It's like right, she foresaw it, and then some. Um, Main character comments, well, you're a second off. And she's like, it was a prediction or whatever. So, like, she can predict things, but she can also bring the things on her tablet to life. It's weird. That part, that part kind of comes... Bring, she's like, she's kind of a god. Like, <laughs> Yes. Yeah. I mean, there's, like, and? aliens with a giant spaceship hurtling towards Earth. So, like... Yeah, which it seems. Hmm. I guess. And, and tentacles. Yes. Ooh. Tentacles. It's Ooh. tentacles. It's someone's fetish. <laughs> it's a lot of people's fetishes. Yeah. <laughs> tentacles. Uh, fun fact, by the way, the first tentacle hentai it dates back to like 410. Thank God. <laughs> Hell yeah. Or something like that. I don't remember the year, but I do remember it's called The Fisherman's Wife. Ooh. Kinky. Also, I want to point out one little thing that I noticed in the film is that the iPad that Oho has, like, the drawings, those are, like, actual drawings on an iPad. They didn't just, like, green screen it in in post. Yeah. Mm. It's kind of, kind of fun. Can I just say, there's also some, like... This film is, like, full of just, like, weird, like, hmm, moments. Like, at, you know, at one point, the um, the leader of the group, whose name I don't remember, she, like, Wild gets card? the iPad. Oh, Missy? No, Missy. Yeah, Missy. She gets the iPad from Oho, and it's just, like, wh why would she, like, why would Oho give her the iPad? Like, yeah. it's just, also, it just like, feels very confusing. For a flashlight, but that mine thing, that tunnel was, like, Bright, brighter than the flashlight, and the flashlight didn't affect anything. <laughs> it's obviously just for plot later. Um, also, yeah. I want to say that uh, they used the president, and they didn't get Donald Trump to act as the president. I don't know why. Like, I'm sure he was available. 
<laughs> oh. Oh no. We can be heroes. Can we? Well, you, not you us. Know? That's kind of, see, here's the here's the fucking thing about the movie, okay? <laughs> The, the the theme of generational responsibility is only done from the adult heroes passed on to the child heroes. And the child mm-hmm. heroes, are they going to band together and, like, stop the world from, like, global warming or something like that? It doesn't really yes, make exactly, much sense. Exactly. Because it. you would have to think that really, to, to, like, actually make significant change in the world, everybody, not just the heroes, would have to work together. But it only focuses on the heroes working together. In fact... The heroes don't even get, like, human names. They're kind of dehumanized in a way. Like, we don't know Wildcard's real name. We just know him as Wildcard. Yo, is We Can Be Heroes an interesting deconstruction of the dehumanization that being a superhero creates? I think so. What? (laughs) (laughs) Yo, uh... I don't even know how to begin... We Can Be Heroes is like the boys, you see. Um, you know? What? Yeah. You know the boys, the Amazon TV yeah, series I'm, and also I'm comic familiar. series? Yeah, this is that's We Can Be Heroes. The We Can Be Heroes is a spinoff yeah, it's of like the boys. With a Ro- Robert Rodriguez take. Yeah. And Childs. Well, there, there's children in the boys. The- there is? Oh my god. Yeah. I've never seen the show, so... There's like a trailer. I haven't actually seen it either, but there's a trailer for one episode for uh, like season two where, uh, what's his name? Um, All I know is like the, a baby with laser eyes, because that might be Reeves. Oh no! The, video. <laughs> there's a, a in one of the trailers. Uh, I forget the guy, the Superman insert character. Um, he throws a child off a off the roof. <laughs> nice. So, yeah. I just want to back up, because, Brendan? Yes. What you have just said is one of the most insanely idiotic things I've ever heard. At no point in your rambling, incoherent take were even close to anything that can be considered a rational thought. Everybody listening to this podcast is now dumber for having listened to it. I award you no points. And may God have mercy on your soul. Thank you for reading us that copy pasta. Um, I, I, I paraphrased uh, that one monologue from that one Adam Sandler movie. Yeah. Yeah. That yeah one Adam you. Sandler movie. Billy Madison. Click. <laughs> Excuse me. Please no, sure. not click. Uh, Adam Sandler special. Oh, okay. One day. Um, grown ups. <laughs> and Grown-up. pixels. Oh, Adam Sandler special. Let's go. Yes. Uh, Grown Ups 1, 2, Click. Pixels. Um, Jack and Jill. QB Halloween, just QB Halloween, for Jack the Rocky Balboa joke. Uh, uncut Gems as well. Yeah. We'll <laughs> yeah. just throw in like a really good film in there. <laughs> um. Yeah, anyways, so we can be heroes. I don't know. There's a lot, <laughs> there's like a lot to say about this film, but like, it's more just like, it's a lot of nitpicks and trying to make this film make sense because this film has a really hard time making sense a lot of the time so okay i don't mean to be that guy but like i don't think in many respects this is supposed to make sense um yeah, this true. But it's, similar to Shark Boy and Lava Girl, although less justifiably than Shark Boy and Lava Girl. Yeah, the the film works off of kid logic. Hmm. I don't um, really I think, think that's it fair. does though. It's actually kind of fair, I think, in a way. Like the way that a lot of situations are resolved is very like we're kids and we're trying to come up with a solution to a problem if that makes sense yeah um i guess so i get well, where you're I, uh, 
But the the thing is, so the entire film really shows them not planning ahead at all, which I agree with you in that point where like, yes, they just are like, here, what's an immediate solution? Let's try it. But the thing is, when the film climaxes and you've seen, you, you see that Missy and Wildcard were planning ahead for like half the movie, it makes it, it makes it feel really kind of disconnected. I guess. Oh? What? Well, what do you mean by disconnected? Well, okay. So, like, yes. I agree with you that kid logic is used quite a bit throughout the movie. But then, why is the climax very much not kid logic? What? What? No, as as in like the internal logic of this film's world is kid logic. Um what do you mean? I thought you meant like their progression on their adventure. I mean, yes that, but more importantly, um The, the very, very simple morality, you know, and, and solutions to problems and things like that. In this, and again, in all of Robert Rodriguez's uh, children's films, very decidedly work on this beautifully innocent, simple kid logic. You know? Um, I don't... I don't think they ever really question morality in this film. No, it's like there's a very clear good and bad. Superheroes yeah. good, uh, the aliens bad until they aren't bad. But yeah, until, but they're not bad. Until you find out that they were just pretending to be bad. Which is very different than like a morally gray villain with like interesting motivation. It is or motivation that pretends to be interesting. It is we were pretending to be bad to test you because we're also good. Yeah. Okay. Is it a narratively satisfying ending? Absolutely not. Oh my god. But like... It is what it is. I... Here's the thing. Frankly, We Can Be Heroes is a bad movie. Yes. But yes. I can't bring myself to dislike it. I dislike okay, it. Okay, I dislike it. Yes. It is not nearly as fun. or like, No, it's not. It feels... I, I'm not watching it again. That's for sure. Basically, the way everything works in the film is so much less interesting i guess it feels incredibly unoriginal in its idea yeah. because of its use of the superhero like genre um and it leads it to being very like standard feeling where shark boy and lava girl legitimately feels like a new like idea for a film like it's like what yeah. if we went into a kid's imagination <laughs> Whereas in this, it's just like, what if the superheroes were kids and they saved yeah. the day? And that leads it to being so much more boring um, than mm -hmm. I think other films. I think there's some creative concepts for the superheroes. The kid who is like the son of the super fast guy, but he's stuck in like a fucking like paradox or some shit. And he just moves really slowly all the time. <laughs> it's really funny. Slow mo, yeah. Yeah. Uh, there's also. There, there, there were two things that I really liked. Where <clears throat> the first two of the heroes that we meet, like Miracle Guy and I don't know the dude with the jetpack, Techno, the guy, yeah, Techno, who you know is coded as like the the gadget guy. He doesn't actually have powers. Yeah. Um, he okay. Hmm. His well, kid we'll this. has literally all of the superpowers. Like that is his thing. Hmm. Whereas. Um, Miracle Guy's kid is 
basically wheelchair bound and ends up being the smart one instead. Yeah. Mm. Uh, and like. One, I like the implication that, like, you know, the powerless guy is the powerful kid. But more importantly, that Miracle Guy is so goddamn proud of this kid, despite, like, being kind of the antithesis of what he is. Mm. That's mm. one thing I wanted to say about this movie as, like, a positive um, at the end, when, like, all the kids, all the parents, like, wow, kids, we're so proud of you. Honestly, kind of heartwarming. Not gonna lie. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, very, very sweet moment. And you got to see, like, the kids with their parents. The one, the, the kids, the fast forward and rewind kids, the when rewind kid was just, like, replaying his dad saying, I'm proud of you. <laughs> he doesn't get enough love. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> um, but no. Like, honestly, kids... Your parents are proud of you. They don't tell you that often, I know, and they should tell you more often, but they love you. We love unless you. They and, and, uh, yeah, unless they aren't. Unless you're from the Midwest, in which case you might have really abusive parents. Well, that is a grand sweeping statement, but also living in the Midwest, boy, a lot of my friends have bad home lives. <laughs> Just a lot of people have bad home lives. Like, it happens yeah. everywhere, unfortunately. Um... Ter- yeah. terribly sad look don't be bad people that's you know we can be heroes that's really what it's all about just don't be bad people also and my god together, the dialogue's atrocious it. even for a robert oh, rodriguez god. Movie. it's so oh, yeah. bad it's so oh. bad oh. it's kind of unbearable at points yeah um like it's not even <laughs> like campy fun like Strike Boy and Lava Girl is, it's just it's just bad. Yeah. Yeah. Like okay, so the beginning of Shark Boy and Lava Girl also had a lot of exposition, you know, and like him telling the story of how he met Shark Boy. Yeah. yeah. But like that's a little more forgivable in that it's all relatively fast and it is literally done in the context of I am telling you a story. Yeah. Whereas just the first twenty minutes of we can be heroes is just exposition like who the heroics are what a bad name for a superhero team by the way um (laughs) it's very non-copyrighted who is the main character what about the other kids and like there's literally the scene where like hi i'm wheels let me introduce you to literally everyone else and also explain what their power and character trait is Mm -hmm. Mm mm-hmm Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's just, it's kind of a slog sometimes. The whole, like, training montage is like, uh, I didn't, didn't need to bear, bore down the movie with it. And then it ends with 10 minutes of credits. There's 10 minutes of credits for this film. It's incredible. Well, to be fair, it does, like, the normal credits and then, like a lot of Netflix originals, it then has the full credits in every language following it yeah Mm. which is like damn oh i mean yeah there's a positive about this film is that it's short it's like it's only 90 minutes ignoring yeah ignoring the credits like 90 minutes so yeah and yet it's still longer than shark boy and lava girl yeah Mm. shark boy and lava girl feels uh less bloated too Definitely. Yeah. Um, Shark Boy and Lava Girl, like, you're having fun while watching it. So, yeah. Way, way more of a breeze. I feel like we're kind of transitioning into scores here. Um, yeah. So, I will, I will give mine. Um, I guess we've said a lot about these two films. I want to, okay. I'm going to give, so Shark Boy and Lava Girl, the first one, fun movie, not a good movie. I'd give it like a three, is the thing. I disagree. Um, I think part of well, I mean, I know like a lot of like the stuff in it is like bad. Like the acting's terrible in it. Yeah, but, like that's kind of part of the point and charm of it in a way. Yeah, that doesn't it, mean it's a lot of charm. I agree. Of... It has a lot of charm. It's a very like I. Here's the thing. I enjoy watching Shark Boy and Lava Girl, but it's not. It's not really. 
something that is I consider like a good movie or like like if I was just alone in a room watching Shark Boy and Lava Girl, I could do You'd it. You'd be yes, having a blast. <laughs> I would be having fun. It's way more fun to like get a group of people around and kind of watch Sharkboy and Lava Girl. Because part of Sharkboy and Lava Girl is that you're laughing at Sharkboy and Lava Girl, and like, I don't know uh, if you are though. Yeah. Because like, I think the movie knows. Like, again, I feel like the movie knows that it, what it's doing is campy it, and dumb. It's like saying but, like you're laughing at Evil Dead Two. Like, no, you're laughing with the film because it knows what it's yeah. doing. No, I yeah. agree. But there's also things like the the special effects and stuff that really hasn't aged well, and it's kind of funny true. now. But again, they were bad at the time. I just want to remind you. Even like were... little kid me was able to recognize. Woof. Um, I mean, I think that's partly due. They they had. I mean, they used up their budget. I feel like if they had more budget, I feel like they would have made it the special effects better, but I don't know. Who knows? Uh, it, that's not really in line with um, Rodriguez's MO, though. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, but anyways, I, I am going to give the original Shark Boy and Lava Girl a 3, although it is a fun 3. It is a 3 that I like. I'll say that. Um, I am also going to give We Can Be Heroes a 3, but it is a 3 that I don't like. Uh, it's not... Not a film I'm ever really going to go back to. It has, I'll admit, it has its moments um, where it's like kind of fun uh, or perhaps a bit heartwarming. But for the most part, this movie is just not not a great time, really. Mm. Okay, so Sharkboy and Lava Girl is frankly a much better made movie than um, We Can Be Heroes. Because even though like they have all the same, like, you know, shitty building blocks. Um, mm. One of Shark Boy and Lover Girl's biggest strengths is its concept, because it ties a lot of, like, the, the campy aspects together and contextualizes them. Like, the reason why the movie works on this nonsensical kid logic is because it is literally told from the perspective of a really imaginative kid. Yeah. Right? Um, I'm going to give Sharkboy and Lava Girl a 7 out of 10. Um, it is the worst movie I've ever given a 7 out of 10 to, and I'm fine with that, man. Mm. Um, <laughs> as for We Can Be Heroes, um... I want to give it a four. I'm going to give it a week five because I appreciate how wholesome it is, if nothing else. Ooh. Uh, that's, it's, that's like generous, I'm going to be honest. I am okay. being incredibly kind because, <laughs> yeah. like, talking about it, it's rude. Talking about it put me in a good mood. Sitting through it, there were, I actually had to stop twice. Wow. So, you know what? Let's take that back. Let's bump that down to a low four. <laughs> okay. I still appreciate it, but... That's that's fair. I stand by the seven for Shark Boy, though. Okay. Um, For me, I kind of agree with Mike. I'm at, like, a six on Shark Boy and Lava Girl. I will say the effects... It's weird, because on the one hand, I want to say, like, yeah, the effects kind of suck a lot of the time. But it just kind of adds to the charm of the film. A lot. <laughs> yeah. It's kind of, in, I feel like it's inconsistent. There are times where it's like, they land in like the goo or whatever, and I'm like, oh, that looks really bad. But then you have like, Mr. Electric, and he looks so good. Like, he's so goofy. And it just mm -hmm. works so well for the film. And they um, do interesting things too. Like, there's a shot where like, you see what he's looking at by the reflection on his glass, which is yeah. really clever. Yeah. Um... I think that all, the film, admittedly, I feel drags at certain points. There's times in the adventure that are less entertaining than others. Um, but, like, it's just so imaginative and, like, fun. Um, this honestly might, like, move up eventually to, like, a 7. Um, yeah, man. But, yeah, I, it's really fun. Would recommend. Um, 
Well, you were sleeping on Shark Boy all these years, I'm telling you. I was. Um, and then, uh, We Can Be Heroes, I had to give a two. It is really <laughs> bad. It is awful. Yeah. I thought it was insanely boring. Um, we're watching the sequel, though, right? Yes, we One will. Day. We absolutely will. Because cool. most of Robert Rodriguez's movies have very fast turnarounds. The one exception being 100 Years, which is set to release in 2115. Well, I mean, nice. how's he going to... How, how are you guys going to make a movie that complete, you know? How can it really be 100 No, years? no, it's yeah, been, been done years. For, for years now. Oh, okay, good. They're just waiting Elliot. to release it good. for some reason. Well, he's it's like years. a time capsule movie. You, like it would be, it's gonna be a giant event. <laughs> They're comparing it who to like signed. How, who agreed to distribute that movie? First of all, <laughs> he has his own um, production and distribution company. He does. I didn't know that. Good for him. Yeah, dude. Yeah, yeah. it's cool. Um. All right. Are we? All right, anybody else want to say things before we wrap, rippity wrap it up? Cool. Uh, do we want to, you know what, let's rip off uh, my brother, my mother, and me and say, don't forget to kiss your dad on the lips. Okay, well, that that would be like a sign off, not a, not a, anything. Oh, damn it. We'll, we'll do we that. Gotta... Well, we have our own sign off that we usually do. Actually, we don't usually sign off the podcast. We just end it. Yeah. <laughs> um. Anyways, for Ending next the week, end. the album is going to be "Pop Food" by Jack Stauber. <gasps> yep, I figured. Yo, I do not. Yo, know. I love that album. I know Jack Stauber. I don't. Uh... I'm like vaguely familiar with him, so it's such yeah. a weird album. Um, oh, I love him, dude. It's like weird indie pop. Mm. Yeah, who you having um, on for that week? It's uh, Jonah. Oh hell yeah! Yeah, and the movie is Hardcore Henry, directed by Ilya oh. Nyshuler. Oh, yep, not definitely don't want to be on next week. Yeah, I fucking love Hardcore Henry. (laughs) Even with pop food. The film is, it's a great film. I really love it. Anyway. Yes. So, tune in next week for that. Joe finally figured out what the movie for next week is. Yeah, I know. I've been wondering this whole time. Um, I swear I haven't read it. It's not on Letterboxd. Wait, is it just not on Letterboxd? It's not. It doesn't show up. Is Letterboxd... Are there servers just down or something? No, no, no. Like, your review... You you haven't reviewed it on Letterboxd. Oh, that's... Okay. I know you've oh, seen okay. it. I swear I've had it... I had it rated. I... It's not showing up. Anyways. Hey, fellas. We, we should sign off for the lovely folks at home. Okay. Interesting. Tune in yeah, next week. Thank you. We too. love you. Yeah. Mwah. Mwah. Mwah.